G'day guys, welcome back to In My Shed, I'm BC. Little episode today, I'm making some items for the train club. And uh, I wasn't even hanging, I should have brought you along. It's a bit of Lexan sheet, uh, cover to go over the new points actuators. They're going from uh, electric control pneumatic to all electric actuators. And I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but that's what the club wants. So I offered to give them a bit of help. There's 30 of these to make. Uh, and while I was machining the plastic down to width, the 30 millimeter had to be cleaned up. They were disrupt the uh, guillotine. It's Lexan, three mil thick. I got almost all the way through making this crap all over the shop, and I thought I should have brought you along to have a bit of a look. Uh, nicely furbished drawing by uh, one of the members, John. The only uh, critical dimensions, and these are going to be a little bit difficult to get 100% right as a quarter inch hole that's got to be uh, a set dimension off the back of the sheet and from my experience drilling Lexan with anything other than a zero angle or flat bottom drill you get too much wall plucking and it chips and it does all sorts of nasty shit so I'll probably put that through with a I think I've got a quarter inch Clarkson FC3 cutter or a quarter inch slot drill if I can and this upper feature is going to be very interesting he wants me to mill eight millimeters wide of the three mil Lexan down to one mil. So that's going to be a bit of a pucker factor to see whether it'll mill or not. I'm using a um, brand new solid carbide 10 millimeter four flute end mill and it's been cutting really clean, cleaning up the edges of the Lexan, but what it's going to cut like when I try and make that uh, thin action down. So that'll be something I'll be gritting my teeth I'll try and bring you in probably over near the roller door over the right of mower so you get a good gander at what's going on here. Uh, if not, it'll be a micro shot. Uh, it's raining outside so I can't get rid of the gear that I normally do and put it outside so it's going to be a little bit tight. But hold on to the elastic if you're underpants and I'll bring you along for a better shot. Okay, back again. I've disconnected the shotgun mic to try and keep the background noise down as much as possible but if there's no noise there's no machining going on uh, you'll just see a little bit of white fluff coming off the plastic but you'll get a bit of an idea the depth of cut is about half a millimetre this time and I think I'm doing about a thousand and eighty rpm so it's not doing too slow a speed uh, comes up with a, a really good finish if you've got a sharp cutter uh, this does mill reasonably well and many many years ago I was involved in drilling some perspex uh, draw doors for ambulances in Queensland and they had to drill holes for knobs etc and they had God's own trouble until we went to zero angle drills and uh, the holes were that good you could actually see through the wall so I was quite impressed with it but anyway I'll make a bit of noise and we'll take this cut If you can manage it, that you're cutting onto the edge of the material, you don't raise any dirt, which can be a, save a few minutes in cleaning up to it later on. But that's not always possible. It's definitely a lot of horsepower operation, that's for sure. This time I think I'll throw up a fair bird because I'll be cutting off the edge. But what I've been using to remove it is just an old holdy burra. Works quite well on the plastic. This is probably one of the few materials I hate working with more than aluminium. 
Pelo menos just gets in the bloody everywhere, but this stuff is worse, I think. Being lighter, it's just flying around by the wind. But that's one of the exciting parts of this job, over and done with. Next I'll put them into a fixture, so that I can get that hole reasonably accurate. But first I'll try at least thinning down one of the edges. I don't want to waste my time drilling the holes and making a jig if getting them down to one millimetre is just going to bust the plastic. So I'll bring you back when the excitement starts again. Okay guys, I'm really a bit surprised here. I did succeed. <laughs> it's a very Heath Robinson outfit and I have to do a little bit of adjusting because I go from 0.98 to 0.82 I think in thickness. So I'll put a dial gauge on it and bang this bit of wood around so it's a little bit flatter but I've got a homemade parallel here as a backing strip and held in place by a welding magnet so that keeps it out from the fence. Next comes in another homemade parallel and two of these fellas to hold the parallel in place and uh, that worked quite well. I've got clearance enough for the chuck to go past, clearance enough for the cutter, everything seemed to work well. Uh, mind you, only taking a half mil at a time cut is going to be an awful long process, but once I get that piece of wonderful wood in the vise a little bit flatter, uh, it'll be a goer. So I'll bring you back when we start the production run. Pity I can't double up and do two at a time or something fancy like that, but it's just going to take me time and then time to clean up the shite afterwards. Bring you back later on. Bye for now. Okay guys, little bit of machining action. Yes, I get to see the swarf coming off. Luckily the cutter still remain reasonably sharp and not giving too much of the work. I think it's been up to the And just one millimetre in the other direction. Like all machine operations you get up to 26 out of 30 and you get a bit better at it but also I put a new cutter in even though the previous cutter had no signs of wear that you could see the cutter's just almost burr free now I'll put you through another run I ended up taking a millimetre of pass and only making two passes out of it and it still does an acceptable job and so it's been a bit of time okay we'll make some noise and cut some plastic Well, I talk too much, that's full depth in one pass. Did a pretty reasonable job. Got a hell of a cleaning job on this machine. It's a bit of a pig now. Okay, bring it back when we start drilling some holes. Okay, guys, we're up to the final operation for these parts. They've got to have a quarter inch hole drilled in them, 19 and a half mil down from the outer edge, and 70 in, so it's smack in the middle, and 19.5 down. Now, everybody scream is using a drill chuck the whole of mill and cut of it. I don't give a rats. Uh, I find that these 
old fashioned uh, centre finders are really good. It's a centre and edge finder, a pointy bit and then an edge finder behind it. Uh, if you're out at all, you can see a pronounced edge around the side of the centre finder and you'll pick that up within about a thou. So for me, this is good enough. I've crossed it onto the uh, centre line on the item and over the dot and that's settled up for all the items now. I've got a end stop up here so it'll be just drop the next item in up against this fence up against the end stop clamped with a locked jaw clamp no need to be farting about with adjustments or anything it adjusts automatically for any thickness and away we go uh, I will have the advantage of having the machine light on so I can see what's happening that's a little bit better I'll swap over to the correct cutter and then bring you back when we're making holes OK, it's a fairly easy job. I've tried one and it worked well. Drop it in. And there's a bit of shite on the end of it. Drop it in. Rinse and repeat as the Yanks say. Thank God there's only 30 it is so bloody boring. Okay guys, that's all there is today on this milling, milling and machining plastic poop. I hate working in plastic by the way. Uh, but repetitive actions shit up your mill but you get something done. So please like and subscribe. I hope you grabbed a little bit from it today. Bye for now.